This is something, it's a really young field, and uh, Barbara's field actually is older. I mean, the use of music and therapy dates back at least to like, the 40s or something, Barbara? Mid-40s, yeah. yes. Whereas mm -hmm. the study of music from a neuroscience perspective um, really has only taken off in the past decade as a serious endeavor that involves a community of people. And so it's a young area, but some of the key findings are, one, that music activates a tremendous amount of the brain. It's not like if, you know, we have these wonderful tools now where you can see what's happening inside a human, healthy human brain as it processes something, right? And you've seen pictures in the newspaper of, of fMRI, this technique sure. where you see a brain and hot spots lighting up. This is the part of the brain that lights up when you see a face and so forth. Well, music is not, it, one of the main demonstrations so far is that when you hear music, just a non-musician, just hearing music, it's not like there's a little hot spot that lights up in your auditory region that this is the music area. You see, it's like a Christmas tree. It just lights up a huge amount of the brain, including areas that we traditionally associate with other cognitive functions like language and so forth, can be activated by hearing purely instrumental music. So that's been an important finding with many implications. Music reaches a lot of the brain.